both defensively. Jimmy Spencer will be playing first base. That's Munson behind the plate. Brian Doyle, he's the second baseman. Shortstop, Bucky Dent. He's been very steady throughout this series. Third baseman, Greg Nettles, steady. More than that, sensational. Out in left field, it's Roy White. A little bit of a sun problem very early in the ball game, maybe the first inning. There's Mickey Rivers finally getting out to his position. His leg seems to be a little bit better. He didn't have to extend himself. The right fielder has not yet come out. That will be Pinella. Here comes Lou. He wears a glove under the glove for fielding. What a big he hit he got. Thurman Munson, the catcher. Thurman might have his work cut out for him today if Beatty, who's a starting pitcher, walks a few of the fast men. There's Beatty. He is very slow and deliberate in his delivery to home plate. The Dodgers may run on him if they get out. Beatty attended Dartmouth playing baseball and basketball. Last game, he has not pitched since Tuesday, October 3rd, when he started the first game of the championship series at Kansas City. He won that with 7 to 1, pitched five and two thirds innings, allowed one run, two hits, five walks, struck out three. We're all tied up, two games apiece, and this Yankee story is an amazing one, beginning with being 14 and a half games back. They caught the Red Sox, they had a playoff, beat them, played Kansas City, beat them, lost the first two in this series, and here we are tied. I think somebody said it best. Even when they're winning, they look like they're losing. They can't do anything easily this year. And now it's a two out of three series as we're tied at two games apiece. Beatty against Lopes. Oh, wow. Uh, I think what you see already here, Joe, in the first couple of pitches, the Dodgers must know that the problem for Beatty might be control, and they're going to take a couple of pitches, make sure that he gets the ball over the plate, and they want to hit strikes. Danny Lopes, a polite single, just drops on that grass. Didn't even dent den it, but he's on, line driving the paper. I'm a firm believer there's no such thing as a cheap hit. And the test may come early for Thurman Munson's arm, and Beatty's move. Oddly enough, Lopes has not yet stolen a base in this World Series, the first four ball games. But you can bet he's going to challenge Beatty's move and the Munson arm. You can make a pool right now that he's gone. You can pick any pitch. I'll pick the second one. Beatty letting him know that he's aware of the fact that Lopes may run. Big lead by Lopes. Diving back. Different ways that they measure. Kenny Boyer, manager of the Cardinals, used to always like to get a lead. And if he fell down, he would reach the bag. He was a body's length and an arm away, was the way he put it. There's the ball. Now Lopes edging off. Beatty, big guy. There he goes. I win the pool. Why do runners like to go on a second pitch, Tony? Well, I think part of it is Davey Lopes had never seen Beatty before. He wanted to see a couple of moves as we watch it again. There is absolutely no chance. Lopes wanted to see a few moves. The first base, see what Beatty would show him. He also wanted to see at least one pitch home, and he found out in a hurry. It's no contest. Russell tried to bunt the ball. Foul tip. Two balls, one strike. Lopes likes to run off second base. And many base runners really are more effective running off second. The late and great Jackie Robinson was that way. Don't look at him once and he was gone. Tried to hit to the right side, fouls it out of play. It's two balls, two strikes. Nobody out, ball game just underway. Davey Lopes single, stole second. Joe and Tom Lopes was telling me uh, before the game today that he had stolen third base about 12 times this season was not caught. For some reason, pitchers just don't check his closely. There he goes. 
It is a foul ball. He had that one stolen, too. What is it, Tom? Is it you just don't concentrate or what? Well, I think there's not many people that do it, Joe. Not many people can steal bases anyway, and pitchers don't think about, of course, the runner at second stealing third. And they, uh, what a pitcher has to do on the mound is to vary his looks at the runner. You look at him once, you look at him twice. What, what a pitcher should do is vary his looks and his delivery to home plate. If he looks back the second time, sometimes you wait three seconds before you go home. The next time, you just a second before you go home. Outside, but why don't they look at the guy in second as much as they do the guy in first? It's just lack of concentration as far as I'm concerned. I'll tell you another thing. Pitchers do not like to throw to second because if they throw it away, you've got a runner at third base, and they just have a fear, most of them. Many times you put on a pick pickoff play, they ignore it. High fly ball, short left field. Roy White battling the sun. Makes the play. Rivers came all the way over from center field to help out in case the Sun Cloud. Mickey really hustled. One thing here that the Dodgers now have failed to do twice in a row. Yesterday, Steve Garvey was on second base with nobody out. Ron Say had the job trying to hit the ball to the right side to get Garvey to third with one out so you could score him with a sacrifice fly. He failed to do it. Today, now, Lope singles go to steal second. He's on second base with no outs. Russell's job is to hit the ball to the right side to get Lopes to third with no but with one out to score him. There's a base hit to right field. Lopes is going to try to score it. We may have a play. Safe. Go to second. Safe. One nothing. Dodgers lead. So Lopes stole base, pays off. You can see not only does he run fast, but look how much he cuts that base. Gomez sends him in. Munson got caught on the outside part of the line. Had he been able to get on the inside, it might have been a closer play, Joe, where he could have blocked Lopes. I and backed off. You. He let the ball, he let the runner get between him and the ball, which right. is dangerous. It could have hit Lopes. I think Munson lost position. He didn't know exactly where he was. He doesn't usually do that. He usually puts that foot, the left foot, and plants it and blocks home plate. You know what might have happened, Tony, is that either he lost his position or he thought they would have no play whatsoever on Lopes coming in. But the play was a lot closer, possibly, than Thurman thought it was going to be. Anytime you let that runner get between you and the ball as a catcher, you're asking for it. Luckily, it didn't hit Lopes. And had he been in front, I, th I think he could have might have made a little bit even uh, closer than that, Tone. Bucky Dent has it. Over to first. There's Davey, the play at home plate. Munson back. You can see the man, the next hitter, Garvey, saying, get on down, slide. There's Frank Pulley making the call. That might have been, it was a pretty good throw by Panella, and it was, was not an in-between hop, so it could not no. handcuff Thurman. No. He was, for some reason, in foul territory. It was behind that plate. Many times uh, you get trapped that way, but usually you like to be in, in fair territory and just turn around and make your tag. Try to keep that ball you, between you and the outfielder. Let that runner get between. There's Debbie Lopes. Side, ball one. Dodgers one. The Yankees have yet to come to bat. We're in the top of the first. Lopes single, stole second. After Russell flied to left, Reggie Smith, whose bat yesterday gave him three runs, drives in a run here today, so he may be breaking loose. Reggie Jackson may be a prophet. He talked about that yesterday. There's the strike. You just need left-handed hitting in this ballpark. It's built for left-handed hitters. The right-handers, they die out in the valley out there. There's Beatty's record, league championship series game against Kansas City. One ball, one strike, two outs, Smith at second. Inside corner for strike two. Ronnie doesn't believe it. Two pitch. Struck him out. Ron Say is out on strikes. That ends the first inning, but the Dodgers break the ice, score a run. It's Los Angeles one, and the Yankees coming to bat. Our hands.
behind Hal Camera, focusing in at the first baseman for the Dodgers. Here's the defense, Steve Garvey at first. Second base, Davey Lopes. He's taking a beating down there. The Yankees have been sliding awfully hard. Lopes with his first stolen base of the series. There's Bill Russell, the Dodgers shortstop. Dusty Baker. Well, that's Baker out in left field for the Dodgers. Rick Monday in center today. Reggie Smith, whose bat seems to be in the groove after yesterday's three-run home run and RBI single today. He's in right field for the Dodgers. The catcher, Steve Yeager. Must be a tough pitch to catch, that knuckle curve that Bert Hooten, the pitcher's going to throw him. Tom, the last time you talked about Bert Hooten, unless I got it wrong, you pretty much said he has trouble getting a knuckle curve over, but everybody's talking about it, and they keep looking for it, and he gets by with his fastball. Well, I think for him to be effective, Joe, he must get his knuckle curveball over. He can throw it two different ways, and he, and he gave the, the Yankees a lot of trouble in game number two of this World Series out in, in Los Angeles. Was it because he was, they were looking for it and he wasn't throwing it? When he got behind, they hit his fastball. They got the base hit to right field, was on a fastball. Reggie Jackson drove in the three runs off of Hooten out there. Rivers, as always, it seems, the first pitch, and now he's going to loosen up and talk to himself and just kind of enjoy Mickey Rivers. One strike. There's a base hit. Mickey Rivers is on. Much like Davey Lopes, a very polite single. He didn't really drill it, but just stroked it oh so nicely. I asked him before the ball game about his leg. He said it's feeling pretty good, but he didn't run well on the first base at all. I tell you, though, Tony, but when a base hits in sight or he has to cover some ground, he really motors. If he bunts, yeah. So I, I uh, if I were Jaeger, of course, with his arm, as we look at Roy White, I wouldn't believe that Rivers' leg was hurting him as badly as it looked running down the first. Jaeger setting the defense. Ho Hooten, 6'1", 200 pounds. Born in Greenville, Texas. Lives in Fullerton, California. Came over from the Cubs for Jeff Zahn and Eddie Solomon. In 1975. What a deal for the Dodgers. There goes Rivers. Oh, no. I told you, you don't believe those guys. That was decoy city. <laughs> it wasn't just a hit and run because he looked like he started right after Hooten made his first move. There goes Rivers. That first important left foot over right, the crossover step. <laughs> he was not limping at all. He no went really well. One strike pitch to Roy White. Outside. One ball, one strike. Never take anything for granted. I tell you, never believe a limping ball player. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Dodgers won. Yankees batting here in the bottom of the first. Hooten has good control. He's only averaged 2.3 base on balls per nine innings. But 77 average. Strikeout average about four per game. Bonnet beautifully, but it's foul. He had saved back there. Joe, the first thing that the Dodger catchers, Jaeger, Grody, were the two that I saw in the workout before the first game here did, was they each took a ball from home plate and they rolled it down the foul line, the third and first base foul line, to see which way the ball rolled. And I'll tell it you, seemed to stay in in this ball pile. I was going to say, because I, I, I did the same thing, and it rolls in, and uh, Garvey was the first guy I saw do it, and that was in the workout that when we came out here, it worked out at 6 o'clock. Russell bobbles and everybody's safe. We talked about the Dodger defense, Tony. The Dodger infielders, and they're probably not as sure on this field as they are on their own. Obviously, that's the case. But they seem to back up on a lot of ball. This ball, Russell had to go four or five steps to his right. He got the little hop up off the heel of his glove. But it's caused quite a problem for Bert Hooten. You know, Tony, you're right. The Dodger defense has been the suspect part of their team. Russell made 31 errors during the regular season. 
And that air, he got handcuffed. You got a little, give a little bit of the credit to the man standing on second base there, Mickey Rivers. Russell might have tried to hurry. He knows Rivers is running well. Tried to hurry that throw to get it to second and took his eye off the ball. That's the fourth error for the Dodgers. Russell has three. Lopes has one. The Yankees have made two. Bucky Dent has both of them. Here is Munson. Munson four for 15 in this series. Tied at two games apiece. Game five. Ball one. Off day tomorrow. And then Tuesday night. Dodger Stadium. Quite an advantage to see the pitcher the second time around. There's Reggie Jackson on deck for the Yankees. But against Tommy John yesterday, they were making him throw strikes. They'd seen him the second time this year. Same thing against Hoot today. Making him get the ball up, get that knuckle, ball, knuckle curve up in the strike zone. Center field, deep. Mundy's got a beat on it. Rivers is tagging up. They're both going to advance. Rivers to third and White right to second. That's one of the hardest balls that Kerbin has hit in this series, Joe and Tom. Very good base running by both Rivers. It was easy for him, but especially by White. Monday, the ball just kept drifting back. He never really could get in position to have the momentum going towards second base. The wind might be carrying the ball. Watch, you'll be able to see it. He's drifting back. Bumps it into a long way, almost 385 feet away to the fence. But by backpedaling slowly, he didn't have a chance to get the good throw in, as you see. I don't think it would have helped him either. They're going to walk intentionally. some reaction because he was the man of the hour in that game yesterday. It was a high fastball off Welsh. He hit it in the right field. White scored and the Yankees tied up the series at two apiece to set up game five. That's pretty good respect right here. First inning of the ball game. Yeah, first base is open. That is the percentages, but you're still loading them up for a pretty good hitter. Red Adams, the pitching coach. Do that, Tony. You got to walk the man. Reggie Jackson is swinging a hot bat. Has driven in a lot of runs in the World Series. I know a lot has of had great success. You got to load him up. You got a guy that does not run well. And Lou Pinella. You got a right-handed pitcher, a right-handed hitter. I got to go for the I double. I agree with you, but sure is showing a lot of respect oh, in the first inning. I think I went too, showing a lot of respect. <laughs> Vanilla the better. One of the theories about pitching, Tony, is you pick a guy in a lineup, you go through your opposing lineup, and you pick one guy you're not going to let beat you, especially in the last three innings. This is one of my theories of pitching. You, you take one guy out of that lineup and say, I'm not going to let this man beat me in the last three innings. And if it comes up even in the first inning when you have a chance to walk him Are you saying and get Jackson? rid of him, I would pitch around Jackson. He would be the guy that I would pick, yes. No, says the first base umpire. Bill Franklin made the call. Frank Pulley asked for some help, and it's ball one on Pinella. It's interesting. Some people would pick Munson. It would depend on the pitcher. It's their own, you know, their own judgment of who they think is going to be most difficult for them. Foul ball. Nice play by the ball boy. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Joe Garagiola with uh, Tony Kupak, Tom Seaver, and Kurt Gowdy. Yankee Stadium, Game Five of the World Series, and the bases are loaded. You're looking at Reggie Jackson at first, Roy White at second, Mickey Rivers is at third, Pinella's up there with a count of one ball and one strike, one out, one to nothing. Dodgers leading. Lopes goes to first. In time. I didn't think he'd get him, but the speed. Vanilla does not run well. A broken bat ground ball, and the Dodger infield really turned it over. And so the double play, it works. And Tony, you got to admire this. It was not hit very hard. In fact, he shattered the bat right in the hands of Pinella. But Russell gets rid of the ball very quickly on a tough play, one of the toughest for a shot. Watch Reggie Jackson. Lopes gets out of the way, and Jackson goes out to left field. Good pivot on the run by Lopes. Jackson didn't begin his slide until after he got past the bag. So it's one to nothing at the end of one. And there you see Davy Lopes next to Joe Ferguson. 
Tony, I just noticed something I hadn't noticed the other day. Jerry Walker is on a hotline with Bertie Tebbets and Harry Kraft. I wonder if they got that instant scout business going. Ball one. Dusty Baker. Good fastball. Rick Monday on deck for the Dodgers. Outside. Two balls and one strike. Dodgers lead one to nothing. Interesting story about the pitcher Jim Beatty, the Dartmouth student. Was sent down early in the year here from the Yankees, went down to Tacoma, spent some time in the minor leagues. The big kid, six foot six, two hundred and ten pounds, was having some control problems. They changed his motion, gave him a no wind up motion. His record was only six and nine on the year, but after they changed his motion, he got a lot of control. The control seemed to come back. He didn't get behind hitters and not as many base on balls. And he won four of his last six decisions. Clyde King worked with him quite a bit. It was Billy Martin and Art Fowler who told Clyde King to go down and work on this delivery of Beatty's. When he did it, he pitched a no hitter for seven innings. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out, nobody on. Popped up. Spencer in foul territory. Makes the play. Baker is out. Fouls to Spencer. You know, Tony, George Steinbrenner, there's two, really two parts of this sto uh, story. George Steinbrenner sent Car Clyde King to Tacoma to work with, with Beatty. Beatty was throwing sometimes three quarters, sometimes almost sidearm. And he was all over the place, in the dirt, behind hitters. You know, he was just, his control was terrible. And then when he was recalled to the New York team back here, that's when Martin sent Clyde King down there and, and they developed this no wind up delivery, which has really helped him. They say the difference between him before being sent out and now with this no wind up delivery is like night and day. Monday takes it inside. Two balls and no strikes. He's got two fastballs, one the riding fastball, and he'll sink the sink a fastball as well so he can get the ground ball, the double play. Outside. And I'll tell you another thing he does, and he did it right there, and we had a great shot of it. He hides that ball well. He almost turns his back completely to the hitter. He hides it well. Look at this. Hard to pick the ball up. Monday draws the base on balls. That's the first walk given up by Beatty. Beatty's control is usually, well, he's averaged 3.6 per nine innings for the Yankees in 78. One game high was six and seven innings against Baltimore. So that's, I'd say, average 3.6. Both Beatty and Munson took long pauses after that last ball was called. We've got a National League umpire behind the plate, Frank Pulley, a good umpire, all the pitchers tell me. But they were surprised that he called that high pitch a ball on Monday. So here is Lacey, the designated hitter. I mean, the swing, hit the bat, and it's strike one. Dodgers jumped out to a two-game lead on home runs. Won the first game 11 to 5, the second one 4 to 3. There you see Jaeger. Don't be surprised if Monday, who's not really a base dealer, doesn't try Beatty with a slow delivery and Thurman Munson with a sore arm. These Dodgers have got to start taking advantage of that. I was talking to Clyde King before the game, Tony, and he said, Beatty is certainly not a polished pitcher by any means. One of the things that he has to work on now and really refine is this move to first base. Does not have a good move to first base and that big, long delivery to home. Monday's just going to lay there and rest a while. <laughs> Lopes hit two home runs in that first game. Ron Say drove in all four runs in that second game, and the momentum seemed to be with the Dodgers. And then the Yankees came back here, and they won 5-1. to one. And, of course, yesterday's game, 4-3 to three in 10 innings. High. It's kind of a series that I think the experts expected between these two good teams. 
Gidry in game three was not as sharp as usual. He walked seven. It looked like the Dodgers were going to win it, but Nettles won it with his glove. Great plays. Nettles was brilliant again yesterday, but it was Pinello who drove in the winning run. So it is who's got the momentum? Depends who you're rooting for, I think. There goes Monday. Here's the throw. They're going to get him. Best throw Munson's made. Well, they were banking on Munson throwing the ball away because Monday did not have a good lead, nor did he have a good break off first base. Thurman just gets rid of the ball. He didn't get a lot on the ball, as you can see, the loop in the ball. Guys like Jaeger will throw the ball at the belt buckle of the pitcher, and it will carry all the way to second base. Munson has to rely on getting rid of the ball, the tag by Doyle. I tell you, Munson's got his way of doing it. He gets the ball there in plenty of time, which is the only thing that counts. They don't pay you for looking pretty when you throw. They pay you for getting the runners, pay you for it, and that's what uh, Munson does. Because he caught the ball one-handed. Usually you catch two-handed. He caught one-handed, took the ball out, and then threw a, well, he threw a quail down there. Struck him out. Lacey, second strikeout for Beatty. So it ends up a one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. It is the Los Angeles Dodgers one, the Yankees nothing. Just starting to turn Central Park. What a shot that is, like a postcard. Low ball one to Craig Nettles. Nettles only two for 16. He's got about seven RBIs with that glove. Runs he is saved. He's going to be an easy out. Davy Lopes to Garvey. Brings up Jim Spencer. Jim Spencer. Spencer is a three swinger, power hitter. Hasn't played that much. He's one for five in the series. Hit 227 on the year with seven home runs. There's that knuckle curve right there. You saw a good picture with our center field camera of this knuckle curve we keep talking about. Throws two of those, Joe. He'll throw the one that goes straight down, and he'll throw the one that goes away from the left-hander. The one that he throws that goes away from the left-hander. Reggie Smith, the beat on it, should have no problem. Two outs. The one that goes away from the left-hander, he throws with one finger, the index finger of the right hand. The other one that goes straight down is the one I guess he's thrown from the start of his career. He throws with two fingers, digs his fingernails right into the ball, kind of explodes the ball out as he throws it. There's absolutely no strain on the elbow or shoulder with that pitch. It's such a unique pitch. Nobody else in baseball that I know throws it, and he picked it up in case you missed the first time that he pitched. An article, I believe, in Sports Illustrated on Hoyt Wilhelm. He just started throwing it wrong. <laughs> Just think if he would have been throwing it right, he could probably be working somewhere nine to five today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have a steady job. One ball, one strike. I saw Hoyt Wilhelm in the ballpark today. The old knuck. He even shakes hands with that knuckleball grip. <laughs> what a pitcher he was. Did he go around? S says Jaeger. Strikes as the third base umpire Bill Haller. So it's one ball and two strikes. Brian Doyle from one of my favorite cities, Cave City, Kentucky. Choose tobacco reminds you of the late Nellie Fox. Bouncing ball to Russell, a big hop. Should get him easily. Hop through. Got him. That was exciting, a routine play. So it's three up and three down for the Yankees. We complete two innings of baseball here. Dodgers one, Yankees nothing. First baseman keeps yeah, he's, he's on, on the, the inside so he doesn't get spiked. But he, he likes to pick up that extra height, and the way they got him jumping around, he can use all he can get. Four gold gloves in a row for Garvey. He's doing a lot of things right. Jaeger outside, ball one. I guess with talking about Garvey the way he plays first base and Munson's throwing, the main thing is get the job done. One ball, one strike on Jaeger. Beatty has that hard sinker. Gets you on the handle of the bat or even the good part of the bat and it goes thunk and it goes nowhere. A heavy ball. Two balls, one strike. 
you say heavy ball. I've had all kinds of people write to me different theories, and I've yet to understand that the ball weighs the same when you put it on the scale, but not when certain people throw it. Strike on the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. And I know you used to always tell me Yogi threw a rock. Yeah, on the second base. Ellie Howard was as light as a feather, just hung up in the air. You could pick it off. Pitchers, I'll tell you, would wear you out with that sinker ball. 2 2 pitch to Jaeger. Fly ball right field. Pinella near the line. It's drifting. That ball. Got it. He got it. Look at that hat. He banged himself. That ball kept drifting, much like the ball on Monday. Right, John, John. Ball is really blowing. The wind doesn't appear to be blowing that way, but it's swirling into the back of home plate, and he really crashes the wall. He didn't get a chance. That's a pretty good play, because when that glove hit the fence, never got jarred loose. Excellent play, Tommy. You know, he made some great plays in last year's World Series in the outfield against the wall and left field here in Yankee Stadium. The wind definitely is a factor. The ball that Monday went back on, that Munson had hit, definitely a factor. And here again, the wind carries this ball, almost carries it out of the stadium. And the only way you can check the winner are the flags. And the flag, there's three flags in uh, right field that are just limp. I'll tell you, that right there, I'm not saying he didn't catch it completely, but you could have had an argument that he trapped it somewhat up against that fence. A lot of white was showing in that webbing where it hit, hit the fence. Ice cream cone. Demi Lopes, who single, stole a base, and has scored the only run of the game so far. Two balls, no strikes. There are the flags. Now, those are, look like the ones in left field, but it doesn't look like the wind would be a factor looking at those flags. Bouncing ball up the middle. Davey Lopes has his second base hit. He may be off and running. And you know that Munson cataloged it on the second pitch he ran. Well, Davey has that in mind, and I wouldn't think he'd go on the second pitch this time. He'll go whenever he gets a chance. Lopes has the best all-time stealing percentage all time that's quite something 331 steals and 403 attempts Alan Roth got his little computer out that boils down to over eight out of every ten attempts Tony I would think that Lopes would try to steal on the first pitch only to tell Munson okay you got Monday but I don't think you can get me the game is a game of messages he had an idea. He was ready to go, and Beatty gave him a head fake and popped his shoestrings. One ball, no strikes on Bill Russell. He only got thrown out four times during the regular season. Lopes did. You look at Billy Russell. The thing that Beatty is doing on the mound, which he did very well against Monday, he, he shortened his leg lift, his left leg lift on his delivery, made a quick delivery at home, and gave Thurman a lot of time. And that's a problem, too, because as soon as he starts adjusting his delivery to home plate, Lopes has served the purpose he wants. Divert his attention to him, the man right there. They're the National League stolen base leader in 78. And as soon as he looks at Lopes too long, he's really goofing up to the header. He's going to make a few bad pitches. Lopes in lead, draws another throw. Usually that means fastball. Not so much that uh, Munson will call for it. It's just a pitcher. Now Nettles is getting on him a bit. Davy Lopes, one of the best in the business at stealing the base. Very rarely will he ever get picked off. We have a conference here. here. Haller, the third base umpire. And Pulley, the home plate umpire. And Ed Vargo at second base. Yeah. Don't know what that was about. Well, let him get some air time. They need it. The thing to watch on Beatty, if he does go home, whether he picks up that left leg and brings it all the way up in his chest or just fires it toward home plate. Team back, two balls and no strikes. You're exactly right, Tony. What's happening now is that his his mind has got his mind over here on first base with Davey Lopes. Pitcher still, his primary objective has got to be the guy standing at home plate with a bat. You can't worry about him so much where you get behind the hitter. There's the strike. There it is, manager's delight. Two balls and one strike. They love the run on this pitch. I've got to believe, Joe, that Lopes could have stolen had he wanted to the first three pitches, but now he knows he's got Beatty right where he wants him. He's going. He, he's leaning. He uh, wants to go. You can see. He wants to go. This is a great part of baseball, a great base dealer like that out there. 
Super. <laughs> you bet you don't like that. That's just my opinion. <laughs> it's not so much fun when you're standing out there on that little piece of rubber and you got to worry about him. There's Tom Lasorda. Boy, he was still upset today. I can't say that I blame him. He was more than upset. He was really Ooh. hot this morning. I saw that replay, and Jackson's right foot was turned over, and the momentum carried him like a dance step. Jackson pulled the play and got away with it. There goes Lopes. Base hit, left field. Kurt Gowdy's man comes through again. Russell Lopes digging hard. He's going to try to score. We may have a play. Oh, How did Munson catch that ball? I don't know. He may be hurt. Right. He stayed there. He may be hurt. He really got, he stayed there. He's hurt. He really got racked. I'm telling you, he he's tough, but he stayed right there. And Davy Lopes, a good, clean heart slide. Watch this. Lopes is out stealing. Now he picks up the ball. White gets the ball. Now with a good throw. Here. Bucky Dent is the relay man. He threw a good throw to home plate. I don't know how Munson held on to this ball. We'll see it again. Ball and Lopes arrive about the same time. An awfully close call. That was a good Another call. Angle. Pauley made a very good call. Lopes, of course, very good speed. And it looks like the tag went right down behind him. Doesn't look like he tagged him. Davy Lopes, watch this throw by White. Davy Lopes, like Eno Slaughter in 1946, didn't wait for any sign. He just kept coming. Munson puts his left leg out there, and now it's uh, open season on left legs. The most important thing as we look at the play again, look at Munson blocking the play with that left foot. That's where he got spiked. You can see right near the Achilles tendon area on that left left heel. Tony, for the Super young base running. For the wow. young kids who are catching and want to be catchers, when you do that, you get exactly what you're asking for, and that's to get nailed. And he got nailed. You just cannot block that plate. Give him a piece of the plate and then make your tag. Well, there's Lopes. The rule says you can't block the plate without the ball, but that is so bang bang. Russell is at second base. He had that plate blocked waiting for the ball, and Davey could have bowled him over, decided to go in head first, and Munson's going to have himself a nice sore leg. Got to give some credit to, there's Russell at second, some credit to Preston Gomez, because the first thing he did was he wanted to know the throwing arms of the relay men. And Dent was the relay man on that play. tell you, Preston was going like a windmill, no doubt in his mind, but Davy would have gone through if he'd had I his hands so. down. Look at that shot. That's something that nobody sees in this ballpark, but you fans do. You can read the 75th anniversary seal on that ball. You know, sees that? Wow. I saw the first base coach. Sees that pitcher with that ball behind him like that. But that's why he's twirling it, so he doesn't hold it just yeah. by one seam. If he'd hold it by one seam, that first base coach, Jim Lefevre, take a good look at it, catalog it, and Mark down the pitch, and if he did it again, he'd be calling it. Wes Westrom used to be great at that. First base coach when he was there with the Giants could call it pitches from the pitcher. Pull foul. Listen, guys, with all this is going on, how about Mr. Gowdy telling us before the series that it was going to be Russell? Ken Clay warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Dodgers two, Yankees nothing. Russell, second Smith, drills it. Ooh, foul, got the umpire on the foot. Right there you saw one of the reasons, that's Marty Springstead, why the American League umpires stand. Well, I guess that guy down the line doesn't stand in foul territory, though, but he got over there in a hurry so he wouldn't be hit by a fair hit ball. <laughs> you got to rub it, Marty. Uh, he's not going <laughs> to rub it. <laughs> Marty got hit on the bunion. One ball, two strikes. Russell took second on a play at the plate. Lopes was safe, scoring all the way from first. Reggie Smith, one ball, two strikes. Reggie's drove in the uh, first run. Good fastball. And that's the third strikeout for Beatty. Got it up. Overpowering fastball. Yes, he, he threw the ball by, right by Reggie. He may have been looking for a breaking ball, but I tell it with two strikes. Reggie a bit disgusted he had his cuts just didn't get the ball. So here is Steve Garvey. Garvey four for 16. He has not broken loose. No home runs hasn't driven in a run. Regular season he had 21 home runs and 113 RBIs. Look at that. Meadows knocks it down. Save 
makes a run. Garvey has a hit, but Nettles again, much like a hockey goalie, knocks it down, saves a run. Most third basemen would not have even reacted to that ball, would have been by him. Look at how many steps he takes. One, two, and it is an absolute bullet. He was playing Garvey way off the line, and yet, as hard as it was hit, he still could take two steps and knock it down. That is an amazing play to save a run. We've been saying that about him all series, though. That adds up to about almost 10 runs oh, that he saved here no for the talent. Yankees in this series. He's got more saves than most relief pitchers. <laughs> here is save. Hi, ah, ball one. That's amazing, the reflexes. Russell is at third. Garvey is at first. There are two outs. One run in. We're two to nothing in the top of the third. Game five. Travel day tomorrow, and then it's game six, Dodger Stadium. One ball and one strike. Say was out on strikes his first time up. Many times after a pitcher does this and fixes his fingers on the ball for the pitch that he's going to throw, the first base coach can pick it up, relay it. What was that grip? I think he steals slider. That's, that looks like a breaking ball you right bet. there. Unless he changes it when he goes in the glove. That's exactly right. And you can find that out over a course of a couple of innings. First, first base coach Jimmy Lefevre, if he got the routine or got the way that Beatty was holding the ball, he could relay that to the hitter. High chopper, Greg Nettles. In time, Say is out. That ends the third inning. Dodgers score a run. So as we go into the bottom half of the third, it's the Dodgers two, the Yankees nothing. And coming up for the Yankees, here in the bottom of the third, it'll be Bucky Dent, Mickey Rivers, and Roy. There's a great shot behind home plate. Yankee Stadium. Bottom of the third, game five, Bucky Dent. Makes it high, and it's ball one. Dent, four for 16 so far in this World Series. Two balls and no strikes. Ball three. Putin has walked one, but that was intentional. Reggie Jackson. Ball four. Four straight pitches. And Bucky Dent is on. Joe, there's been quite a change in the atmosphere of this Yankee, or the attitude of this Yankee ball club since they came in front of their home fans. You can almost see it up with the bats. They're a little more aggressive. Defensively, they're much more aggressive than they were in Los Angeles. And I think on the other hand, it's turned around. The Dodgers are weighted back defensively on some balls. I don't think they're swinging the bats quite as aggressively, partly because the left center field is taking some hits away from them. Right now, 2-0 Dodgers leading with Mickey Rivers up there, the tying run. Dent is at first base. Nobody out. Five. Five straight bad ones. Now as a catcher, you don't know what to do except maybe just slow down the rhythm a bit. He likes to pitch fast, too. He likes to get the ball usually and go. There's a strike. Well, I tell you, if he throws strikes, you let him pitch in that pattern. But if he's throwing bad ones, you got to do something. And you try to slow him down and get him back in the groove. Look at the Yankee hitters got to have an order, I can tell, to uh, take a strike. Rivers is unusual to take him, have him take a pitch. One ball, two strikes. You can usually tell Mickey Rivers is bad in the bat rack before the game is the one that's moving. Dodgers leading. A little look to left field. It's going to drop. Mickey Rivers has his second base hit. He's just getting the first right now. There's something to had to show up in scouting reports that Mickey Rivers has excellent power to left field. Carlos Stretchy found that out late in the season. Dusty Baker was playing him very deep in left field, and this little looper sneaks in front of him. What a piece of hitting. That was a quick pitch to even get the bat out. Pretty good pitch, Tony. Oh. It looked like a knuckle curveball down and away. He just stuck his bat out and flipped it out to left field. Putin has dug himself a little bit of a hole right here. Roy White, ball one. 
He can handle a bat. Bucky Dent's at second. Rivers is at first. Say will have to charge in. So will Garvey. He might be swinging. No. One ball, one strike. You got to keep the little guys off the bases. Dan, that's a big mistake watching Dan on four pitches, the number nine man in the lineup. Walk him on four pitch. You got to make him hit his way on the base. Mickey Rivers hit a pretty, pretty good pitch. Well, you can't do anything about that. You got to keep the little guys off because you got Munson and Nettles and everybody else coming up. Switched off, and it's one ball, two strikes. Sam Naren used to be in the bullpen. He'd always say, you got to keep them nits and nets off because them lions and tigers will get you. One ball, two strikes, Roy White. He doesn't take his eye off that pitcher. Line drive, right field, base hit. Here comes Ben. Rivers stops at second, two to one. Dodgers. Tell you, that ball had double written all over. I don't believe Rivers was on second base. I can't believe that. Can't He's got to be on third. That ball's all the way down the right field corner. I think the credit should go to the man out in right field, really. I thought Rivers was going to go. White right was going to have a double. And Reggie Smith, there's Mickey down at second. Right at first. But Reggie Smith went into that corner and rifled the throw into second base. So it's two to one the Dodgers now as the Yankees pick up a run there's nobody out Munson is the batter base runners at first and second and you can see the crowd reacting Tom Lasorda Munson flying to center field he hit the ball hard drifted near the wall in right center time being called now Hauser wants to talk to Munson nothing else this gives the other the other team something to think about Tony yeah Munson hasn't been called upon a bunch too often this season I don't think not at this stage of the ball game just the third inning he hit the ball pretty well the last time up I tell you when these big hitters get the bunt sign it almost shock sets in because a lot of them don't even know how to spell it much less bunt it's not in their repertoire there's a strike. There's Reggie. I've been on clubs where the guys, sluggers, didn't even bother about learning a bun sign. Just never got it. There go the runners. There Look at that. Is. Everybody's safe. That was not a steel situation. It was like a hit and run. Munson was just trying to hit the ball somewhere, stay out of a double play. Lemon started both runners. What's the pitch? One that Jaeger can hardly hold on to. Way outside. Munson still goes after to give some protection. It was a knuckle curve. He protected those runners very well. Rivers came in standing up. He's dead if the pitch is anywhere near the strike zone. Jaeger did not do a good job of catching that ball. It caught him by surprise. Took the ball down into the dirt. Now it's two strikes, nobody out. There's a base hit, right center field. Rivers scores. Rounding third wide, here's the throw. They're not going to get him. Bad throw. Munson goes to second. It's in the stands. Munson will go to third. Taking the lead. Munson hit the knuckle curve. It looked like it was up and in. Bert Hooten threw it off. Just stood out in the pitcher's mound. He never backed up home plate. And it might have cost him at least an extra base. Munson getting to third. And now there are nobody out. So the defense continues to hurt the Dodgers as Reggie Smith's ball, his throw gets away. And there's Lasorda. We've seen a good exhibition of bad baseball, Tony. There's no question about that. Here's Mickey Rivers. He's playing coach. He's motioning to the base runner, Roy White, to come on. Everybody go. 
I think Lasorda, more than anything, wants his players to regroup because uh, that's the kind of an inning you want to film and show it to the little leaguers and say, that's it, don't do it that way. This is an exhibition of bad baseball, that's for sure. Mickey Rivers got a two-strike hit, Roy White a two-strike hit, 0-2 on Munson, he gets the base hit to, uh, to right field and then the overthrow. Bert Hoot not doing his job backing up. He's got to back up either the third or home plate. Wherever the play's play is going to be, there's Roy White on his way home. And you'll see the throw way over Jaeger's head. No, no contest. They were not going to get White. No way. And no it's way. bad the cut baseball. Off, the cutoff man, if he had been there, they could have maybe gotten Munson at second. Here is Reggie Jackson. Infield is in. All one. It all started with a walk to Bucky Dent. Single by Rivers, single by White. Single by Munson. Two balls and no strikes. How'd you like to play in on the infield with the way this guy's swinging the bat? Well, the last time up, they walked him intentionally Ooh. because of the power, and now they, they have to play in. Bob Lemon, can you tell them what the score is? Three balls, no strikes, and I tell you if he gets his pitch you're going to see a major league swing he'll be looking for a particular pitch in a particular spot oh, unbutton your shirt and have a good one Reggie <laughs> three balls and one strike nobody out Munson is a third three runs are in Yankees lead three to two it's a little chilly on that field as you can see Reggie puts his hand underneath his arm trying to warm up the fingers. Got to be a little cool on the Dodger bench. Three balls and two strikes. Munson at third. Nobody out. Three runs in. Dodgers leading. The Yankees leading. Three to two. There's that knuckle curve it looked like. Is that what that was? He, he turned it over or something, but he got him on two of them, didn't he? You can't really tell what the pitch is from up here. Either knuckle curve or the changeup. Reggie was way out in front of it. He was fooled, obviously, as you can see, the ball going away from him at the last moment. Right there, he is still kind of baffled by it. Brings up Lou Pinella. Pinella into a double play his first time up. with three runs have taken the lead. And it's in. Munson will score four to two. The Dodgers are playing very badly, and I've, I've watched the Yankees here for a couple of weeks. You see Lasorda going out to the mound. There's going to be a pitching change, and Bert hooton has gone already. He doesn't even wait. For Lasorda or Jaeger to get there. The Yankees have a lot of experience in that lineup, and they're one of the most opportunistic teams that I have ever seen. In my 12 years in the Major Leagues as playing as a player, I've never seen a club take advantage of another club's mistakes as much as the Yankees have done in the last couple of weeks. John, I know you heard what Yogi's comment was when asked, is this the best Yankee team? He said, I don't think so, but it plays under pressure better than any team I've ever seen. Well, we've got a break in the action here. We're going to be right back after these messages. Four runs are in. Yankees lead four to two. This is Nettles against Rutson. Full foul. Lance Rutson. Second game in this series. Two thirds of an inning. Game three gave up one hit. He pitched one game in a 1977 series, so he's no stranger. Ed Vargo calling time, motioning to the dugout. For game six, it'll be Hunter or Guidry against Don Sutton. The Yankees will announce their starter after today's game. One strike, one out, four runs in. Greg Nettles. Lopes could be two. There's one out over to first. 
Double play, 4-6-3. That ends the inning, but the Yankees have a good one as they score four and take the lead. So at the end of three innings, Yankees four, Dodgers two. And two up, it'll be Dusty Baker, Rick Monday, and Lee Lacey. And we'll be right back after these. Yankee Stadium, it's game five. And right now, four to two Yankees. Tommy John. I wonder if that's another NBC camera shooting his home scouting reports. I didn't have home movies. Uh, he, can, he and Sally can sit there all winter and look at him. There's a curveball strike. Dusty Baker. Baker fouled to the first base for his first time up. That was the biggest inning of this series, that four run inning by the Yankees. Outside, one ball, one strike. Jim Beanie, Bert Hooten has been replaced. Strike. One ball, two strikes. Back to the screen. I'm looking at that Munson. I know his leg is going to be sore. His shoulder is sore. He's going to get on that plane and think he's going to be filming a segment for MASH. For a while, he thought this spring he was going to have to have surgery on his knee and might miss a good part of the season. He somehow battled through it. Two balls, two strikes. Popped up in the infield. Everybody hollering for Nettles, the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Munson doesn't need surgery on his shoulder, though. You ever saw it with that lump on it? That's what I mean. You think so. Here's Rick Monday. Monday walked in the second inning and was out stealing. Just that, I believe he probably what grabbed that across the seams. The other with the seams to make it sink. That kind of movement. That good riding fastball you hold across the seams, Tony, and that sinker you hold with the seams. He's got both of them. He's got a fastball, a little ride, a little tail, a real good, active, live fastball, and the sinker. But you want to keep down in the strike zone. You want your ground ball. Foul tip. You know, if a guy just tuned in and never heard baseball, he'd have gone bonkers listening to that. Hold it across the seams for a little live tail on fastball that rides and sinks when you <laughs> roll it with the seams. You understood us, didn't you? No. Well, if you could, the fans can. I, I never have understood pitchers. Never will. <laughs> One strike on Lee Lacey. He's out on strikes. It's first time up. Now he's up to a strike two. Two outs and nobody on. Yankees four, Dodgers two. We're in the top of the fourth. This is game five. As we look at Jaeger, series tied at two apiece. Tuesday night, Los Angeles. Way outside. And the starting pitchers, it'll be Hunter or Guidry for the Yankees. They'll announce it after the game against Don Sutton. You'll see it all right here on NBC. We'll be there. We'll be looking for you. Two pitch. Out of play. The thing that Clyde King, excuse me, Tony, the clean that thing that Clyde King was concerned about is that BD hasn't pitched in 11 days. That's a long layoff for a pitcher, and many times if you lay off that long, not pitching in a game, of course he's worked in the bullpen some during workouts or whatever. You lose a little sense of rhythm, a little sense of timing, and that's one of the extremely important things for a pitcher. First thing to go too, that you begin to have trouble with. If you haven't pitched in a long time, is the breaking ball, oddly enough. The feel and the touch on the breaking ball seems to go. Lee 
KC. One ball, two strikes. Down he goes. Now, if you if you're thrown in a bullpen, as we look at Reggie Jackson, there's Clyde King with the in the middle of the horn rim glasses. Dodger pitcher, former manager. You mean you have to have competition to develop that curveball? You can't keep that feel in the bullpen? There's a lot of difference between throwing the bullpen and throwing against a hitter, Joe, that's for sure. Struck him out. That's his second time. Lacey's going out. It's a fourth strikeout for Beatty. He's got himself a one, two, three inning. So we go into the bottom half, the fourth inning, and it's the Yankees four, the Dodgers two. And it'll be Jim Spencer, Brian Doyle, and Bucky Dent for the Yankees. I'll get it right out of this pitch here, and uh, Sutton and Dusty Baker led the Dodgers. Service was about 25 minutes. They got away from winners and losers' shares, millions of television viewers, and thought about religion. Back to the ball game. Okay, Kurt. Former writer from Detroit, Watson Spolstra, heads that program. Big Bill Glass, John Warhouse. It's really spread. Ball players do it all season long. Spencer, a bouncing ball to Garvey. In fact, uh, they presented Andre Thornton, Cleveland Club, with the Danny Thompson Award. So I'm not talking to him in Los Angeles. One out. Brian Doyle. I think it's interesting the way the three ball games have been turned around. The momentum gone to the Yankees, and you would think it would be the Yankee bats, but it was the glove of Nettles. It really provided the momentum for the Yankees with that sensational first game here in Yankee Stadium. I think that the guys all felt the way Gidry was pitching. They should have lost that game. Should have been beaten. Pass Garvey, base hit for Doyle. And for Doyle, that's his second hit in this series. Doyle has a twin brother, Blake. They are identical, except for one thing. Brian choose to back on the right side, Blake on the left. Ah, uh, you're putting no, me on. No, I'm not. I am not. You mean that's the way the teacher could tell them? They are school? identical. Well, if they went to college, you couldn't. Of course, it's <laughs> elementary school. They didn't do it. <laughs> Here is Bucky Dent. Dent walked and scored. He got that third inning started when the Yankees scored four. Low ball one. One man out, one man on. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Yankees four, Dodgers two. Hunter or Gidry against Sutton. Game six in Los Angeles on Tuesday night. Pitch out. Oh, good and by the Brian side. Doyle missed the sign and good Luckily. thing for him. Now he's going to check at first base with Michael. Oh. He blew the sign nine ways from the middle, and Brian Doyle is talking while Bucky Dunn is really upset. I Go ahead, Tony. There's one thing I think of very quickly if I were Bob Lemon, that the Dodgers might have my steal sign. Watch this. Pitch out. Dent goes after it. He's trying to protect the runner who's not going. That's Doyle. And look at Jaeger. He's wondering what happened. We had your sign. Now he uh -huh. pitches out again. Nothing happens this time. Brian Doyle. I'll tell you, that's how you can mess him up. At Pittsburgh, we used to do that. Campanella had our signs, but we wouldn't run, so he wasn't ever sure. Joe coming in. Very aggressive base running by Doyle. Here he comes. The ball handcuffed. Bill Russell, the shortstop. Baker came in. He was playing deeply again. Right there. He jammed that bag. May have jammed his shoulder. I believe Gene Monahan is looking at the shoulder, but that is a pretty good piece of base running by Brian Doyle, taking advantage of the throwing arm of Baker. Baker threw it underhand and threw a sinker. Baker was off balance in left field, Tony. I think it's also, it a, continues an exhibition of bad baseball by the Dodger team. It was a tough chance for Russell. We've seen great plays made in this series, and then Baker comes in to get the ball, throws it off balance to third base, and while you look at this play right here, good aggressive base running, Bucky Dent in scoring position at second base. One out. 
remain two men in scoring position, and it's a bad play, I feel, by the left fielder, Dusty Baker. He was off balance. He should have kept the double play in order, gone to second base, to keep Den at first. That's the big thing. It's true he's in scoring position. As we look at Doyle, it's his shoulder. It looked like his left shoulder they were working on. But now the infield has to come in because they lost a chance for the double play with Mickey Rivers. Have the Yankees pressure this defense? That's what they've done. Strike one. Bronson's got to go for the strikeout. One man out. Base runners. Doyle is third. Dent is at second. Four to two. The Yankees are out in front. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Base in. is two for two. He has scored a run. Two singles. Here comes Doyle. Rounding third. They're going to hold him. And Smith gets the ball in. Mickey Rivers gets his third base hit. And his fans are going wild. There's Doyle. Aggressive base runner who barreled a third. Dent only got as far as third because he had to wait to see what Doyle's going to do on third base. He held second base spot to make sure that Doyle was going because he did that, he did not score. It's a further extension of the bad baseball. They're playing left field off Dusty Baker. The infield's got to come way in, trying to get the runner at home. They don't have the range. They can't cut the ball off that's right in the hole, and it costs them. Costs them another run, and now you got men on the corners, and still just one man out. Roy White. are falling apart. Well, they just can't do anything right. Garvey Final removes, thing. He removes the first right here. Then he decides he cannot get the runner at second base. Had he had gotten him into a rundown at second, this run would have scored. And he knew it, so he threw home through Wiley. He'll be charged with an error as Dent scores. Now goes back to retouch the home plate. Rivers goes all the way to third base. It's an intelligent play by Garvey. He can't get the man. He's got to try and get the man at home plate. He can't get the run down. He had trouble picking the ball up to begin with. And another wild throw by the Dodgers. Lasorda on his way to the mound. we got two guys working out in the Dodger bullpen. Charlie Huff is one of them. Looked like Rick Roden was the other one. So while Lasorda goes out there, let me tell you. Well, we announced about uh, Hunter or Guidry. They'll announce it after the game, the Yankees will, against Don Sutton for game six. If the Yankees win, I would imagine it would be Hunter, and if they lose, it would be Guidry. How do you feel? Joe, I doubt that Guidry can come back at all, and he's even questionable for game seven if it goes that far, because he had a terribly sore shoulder. He was throwing sidearm the last 40s of that ball game. Couldn't even lift his arm. The question I've got in this ballpark, where's Doug Rao? He's a left-hander, ideal for this part. He won 15 games during the season. Hit by Munson. Munson gets his second base hit, drives in his third run, and the Yankees lead seven to two. A knuckleball by Charlie Huff, and Munson serves it to right field. Joe Garagiola here with Tony Kubek, Tom Zeber, and Kurt Gowdy. Game five, and the Yankees seven runs, nine hits, no errors. Dodgers two runs, five hits, and three errors, and we're in the fourth inning with two men out and a base runner. Munson with Jackson batting. Knuckleball outside. Dodgers jumped out to an early lead. First inning, one to nothing. It was two to nothing. Third, Yankees scored four in the bottom half of the third. Three here in the fourth, still batting. Two balls, no strikes. You know, Tony, one thing I think that's important, you look out at that scoreboard and it has the Los Angeles Dodgers airs three, but there's a lot more airs if you can't start considering the mental aspect of the game, the way they played here today. The overthrows, the base hits with two strikes, not all of the little things. Not backing up home plate by Hooten. Throwing to the wrong base, throwing to third base when you're off balance in left field. Just bad baseball. The point you made about momentum going from the Dodger dugout to the Yankee dugout. I think has certainly had its effect on the Dodger team. Three balls and one strike. Two men out. Jackson, he walked in the first inning out on strikes in the third. 
pick. Garvey's holding Munson on with two outs. Don't know why, because he is giving a big hole to Reggie to shoot through. They put the shift on Russell for the first time I've noticed, has gone to the first base side of second. And there's Tommy Lasorda. Lasorda has a problem for today anyway in short relief with Welch and Forrester. I've got to believe with tender arms. If they should come close again in this ball game, which is always possible, he'd have trouble in short relief. Munson at second. Jackson is at first. Two men out. Yankees seven. Dodgers two. Fourth inning. Strike. This fellow at the plate right here might turn out to be the prophet. After the Yankees dropped the first two out in Dodger Stadium, Pinella got back to New York and got on the radio stations. He says, we're going to sweep them in Yankee Stadium. We'll come back here with three in a row. Looks like his odds are pretty good right now. One ball, one strike on Lou Pinella. the catch that ends the inning but it's a good one three runs for the Yankees and as we complete four innings the score Yankees seven Dodgers two and it'll be Steve Yeager Davey Lopes and Bill Russell for the Dodgers Los Angeles of course three hours earlier just 3 11 we'll be there for game number six off day Monday a travel day although the Yankees are leaving after the game I believe the Dodgers in their private Charter are leaving also. Here are some scores. NFL football. Pittsburgh 34, Cleveland 14. Most of you around the country saw that ball game. Tony Pittsburgh remains the only undefeated team in the AFC. Amazing. That's a good ball game. 34-14. Look at that Washington score. Philadelphia upset them 17-10. That's Washington's first loss. It'll be Beatty with a five-run lead as he pitches to Jaeger leading off the fifth. Yankees with two big innings, four runs in the third, three in the fourth. The Dodgers scored one in the first, one in the third. One ball on Yeager. He fly to right field up against the fence. Pinella making a good catch back in the third. One ball, one strike. Now it'll be Thurman Munson's job to keep or try and keep Jim Beatty in the groove with that five-run lead. He'd like to get six strong innings from him. They can go to the bullpen then. One and one pitch. Hit the left field. White's going to have to hurry. It falls in front of him, so Jaeger's on. Jaeger leads off the fifth for the Dodgers. Now it's Davey Lopes. He's two for two in the ball game, two singles. He has stolen a base, and he has scored two runs. Lopes, the man who inspires this Dodger offense. He did it in games one and two. Tried to do it today and had a pretty good start in the first and third. But the Yankees jump back. One ball. Nettles in tight at third base in case Lopes tries to drop, drop a bunt down. There's Greg. Come on, Jimmy! Fly ball right field. Panella drifts back to the warning track again. He's got it for the first down. So Lopes is retired. Jaeger returns to first base and will bring up Russell. You know, Tony Beatty's throwing awfully well on the pitches that the, the hitters are not swinging at. Thurman has to catch behind home plate. He's almost stabbing at the ball. The ball is really alive as it goes into the strike zone. And Davey Lopes, a real good fastball hitter, could not get around on Beatty's fastball there. He can be overpowering on certain days, Munson tells me. Beatty also throws what he calls a slider, but Munson says, no, it's just a hard curve. As a changeup, he uses a palm ball. 
One out. Yankees lead seven to two. We're in the top of the fifth. It's Russell who has a double in this ball game. Green Bay, 45 to 28, and I'd say it's surprising. Green Bay remains first place in the NFC Central. In that game, uh, Turnell Middleton scored four touchdowns. 45-28. The Packers, your team, Tony, over Seattle, 45-28. What a set to right field by Russell. Yeager will try for third. Here comes Pinellas through. It is not in time. The ball hits him. And we, Nettles hustle after the ball because Russell started to go to second base. We finally found Nettles' weakness. He can't catch the ball when it comes off the runner. <laughs> here you see Yeager going around second on his way to third. He's going to make it easily. One point here about... The Dodgers base running, Bill Russell stayed on first base even though that was a high throw. It looked like he might have been able to go to second. It was over the cutoff man head, and he should have been on second base. Russell having quite an offensive series. That's Yeager leading off third base for the Dodgers with one out. Reggie Smith, Russell now has 10 base hits. He leads the World Series of hits. Just got under it as he hits it high, but too short. Manalo comes in. Yeager is going to try. He's tagging up. He'll bluff, but he's not going anywhere. Two outs. Tom, I want to question you on what you said about Russell going to second. To this extent, when you're losing by that many runs, can you assume that the throw is going to be over the cutoff man's head? Because if you get nailed, you run yourself out of an inning. You look like you're wrong if you do get nailed, but if the throw is high enough for you, in your judgment, do you think it's going to go over the, sec the cutoff man's head? You've got to go to second base. I'll tell you what I thought was dangerous for being five run down was Yeager, Yeager catcher, exactly right. not even trying for third base. In fact, i got to believe that Preston Gomez was saying, go back. So I believe There's that. Yeager. But he challenged the arm of Pinella and barely got away with it. Two outs, first and third for the Dodgers. Beatty to face Steve Garvey. This could be an important man. Garvey has not been hitting, but if he starts, look out. Could get right now, these Dodgers back in the ball game. One strike on Steve. If he gets a long knock here, it'll pick that ball club up, and if Beatty can get him out, make him look bad, it'll be another boost for the Yankees, who don't need too many more because they got five big run lead up there. Seven twos to score. One strike to count on Garvey with two out. Base runners at first and third for the Dodgers. This is one of those situations where it doesn't look like much, but it's, it's, it's a tough situation for Beatty. Munson knows it. That's why he's holding Beatty back a little bit. He wants everything to be right because this is an important hitter. One and one. Garvey's the man can get this ball club. The Dodgers right back in it, right here. Baseball is really a game you never see in a game of messages. If Garvey hits the home run, he's giving him a message that we're not dead. If Beatty gets him out, he says, we're about to bury you. A tough out, Steve Garvey, one and one pitch. Way outside, two and one, now Steve's ahead. Yeager at third, Russell at first. Spencer playing behind him with a five run lead. Everybody talks about his physical ability, but Garvey says his secret is his intensity, his ability to concentrate. Russell's going. Munson has no chance, and now the force out is removed at second base. With two outs, five runs down, they were giving him the stolen base, so he took it. Now it's Yeager at third, Russell at second. Removes the force, a tough play for an infielder. They want Beatty to concentrate so much on Garvey, they said let him take off, and he did. Now two runners in scoring positions. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yankees seven, the Dodgers two, at the top of the fifth. Good pitch. Foul off. Tony, how do you read that? Uh, what message does that give you, Tom? How about you? You know, letting a guy run like that, you got a five-run lead. That, to me, that was pretty careless. Well, I think they got to be aggressive. I think that the momentum has switched over to the Yankees, and I think what they've got to try and tell themselves more than anybody else that we're still alive, we're still good, but we can't sit back and hope something's happened. We gotta try and make it happen. We but gotta that, be aggressive. How about the Yankees letting them just take that base that easily? They want Petey to work on this hitter and forget the base runners. Two and two. He got him. Garvey goes after a bad pitch, a big pitch by Petey to a tough RBI man, Garvey. So he strands two. We'll go to the last of the fifth here in Yankee Stadium with a score. The Yankees seven, the Dodgers two. 
It's Greg Nettles, Jim Spencer, Brian Dahl to face the third Dodger pitcher, Charlie Huff. For the Dodgers, two runs, seven hits, three errors. For the Yankees, seven runs, nine hits, and no errors. Nettles is grounded out, and he's also hit into a double play in the third. One strike going after the knuckleball. Some football scores. Atlanta over Detroit, 14 to nothing. New England, 10. Cincinnati, 3. And Tampa Bay to the Giants. John McKay loses a tough one. Giants, 17. Tampa Bay, 14. Another good knuckleball, two strikes. Nettles with just two base hits, one RBI in the series, but as we said before, it was his glove in game, the first game here in Yankee Stadium that might have, might have turned the Yankees around. The oh, Jets, two to Nettles, excuse me, Joe. The Jets over Baltimore, Tony, 33 to 10, a big one. Knuckleball by Nettles, so he starts the last of the football for the Yankees. Knuckleball just hung up in his eyes. Jim Spencer now. The Yankees keep pounding away with four runs in the third, three runs in the fourth, and Nettles has started this inning off. That knuckleball is such a delicate pitch. The speed of the pitch is so important. Charlie throws it too slowly. He can't control it in the strike zone. Too fast, there's no break to it. Takes a while to get your feet on the ground. One ball. It's a tough ball to throw, a tough ball to catch, a tough ball to umpire. Almost impossible to hit, I think. One ball, way inside. Nice block by Yeager, 2-0. I think Killebrew, Harmon Killebrew, had the great, greatest description of how to hit the knuckleball. He was putting somebody on. He said he looks for the seams and he tries to hit between the seams. Hoot was the starter for the Dodgers. Rotson was second and now Huff. Two balls, one strike. Nettles is down at first base for the Yankees. Huff grips that knuckleball. Maybe able to see him do it right here. Well, he had kept it in his glove that time. A lot of times you grip it with those two fingers, then put it in. Tries to decoy the base runner. Fouled off out of play. 2-2. Two -two. The Dodgers came into Yankee Stadium two games up. They had everything the way they wanted it. Nettles glove may have been the factor. It was a big factor to turn the Yankees around. They're now in the third game in Yankee Stadium. They've swept the first two here, and they lead 7-2. to two. You've got to believe when this series goes back to Los Angeles, the Dodger fans in that ballpark is going to be a big lift to this Dodger ball club. Well, they're certainly not playing well, Tony. No. And their defensive play, their decisions on the field are not the way you would normally see the Dodgers play. You don't go ahead and win a National League pennant playing the way they have today, that's for sure. They're going to be very comfortable when they go back home. Looper in the infield. Lopes looks at Nettles. He's not going to trap it. He takes it. So Spencer's out. One down. This ballpark is not built for the right-handed power all the way out in left center, 430 feet. Several balls that they've hit in this ballpark, as you look at Bob Lemon, would have been home runs in Dodger Stadium. Tommy Lasorda obviously a little bit upset today. A little must be a lot upset the way his club has played. There's the score. Final. Overtime. Dallas 24. St. Louis 21. Kirk Gowdy would say, a sudden victory. A good term. It gets away the knuckleball from Jaeger, so Nettles will go to second. Scored a pass ball. Well, a tough one for him to handle. He gave Jaeger a pass ball. You can see his glove. He's changed gloves since. Charlie Alpha's come in. He starts out with the regular size glove and he's gone to the knuckle curveball or the knuckleball glove. One ball, no strikes, one out. Brian Dahl, the hitter, with Nettles down at second base. Seven to two, the Yankees lead over the Dodgers. Foul off out of play, one and one. Tony, while I got a chance here with this foul ball, I, I think it's good news. We've got a spot here. The Amateur Sports Act calling for the 
restructuring of amateur sports in America passed the House at 5 o'clock this morning with a $16 million appropriation. We're looking at one of the great events of professional sports, but our amateurs need some help, and they got it in the form of that appropriation. Took the trouble now. Reggie Smith over. He was playing shallow for Doyle. He plays a good outfield. Not only is he throwing well, he saved a possible double earlier on Roy White. He made an excellent throw to get Blair in yesterday's ball game that, that helped the Dodgers stay in the ball game. Right now, he makes an excellent play. Two outs. Bucky Dent. He has walked, scored, he has singled a short. A hard line drive that handcuffed Russell. He also scored in the fourth inning. Two outs. Seven to two. The Yankees over the Dodgers were in the last of the fifth. I'll remind you that 8 Eastern time tonight. The Bob Hope Special, 75th Anniversary Special. A lot of great guests. And the partner, Kurt Gowdy, might have Bob Hope as a special guest very shortly. Two strikes on Dent. Huff's knuckleball is really moving, Joe. Oh, I know you've had some experiences with knuckleballers, and they were not pleasant. Tony, I tell you, the knuckleball is the toughest thing in the world. Many descriptions. I don't know who said it. I wish I could give him credit, but I agree. It's like trying to eat soup with a fork. <laughs> Hop way ahead of that. No balls, two strikes. One and two. Nettles at second. There it hits it hard. Top play. Handcuffs Russell again as he knocks it down. I'll tell you, when you start backing up on balls, you're in trouble. They always talk about the old baseball cliche, letting the ball play you, and that's just what the Dodgers have done most of the time here in Yankee Stadium. Maybe Lopes last night said that this is one of the fastest infields he's ever played on, Tony. That ball took off to Russell's right. Seemed to gain speed as it got. Watch that hop, and it goes off the heat of his glove. He saved a run by getting over there, being able to knock, the, knock that ball down. And he, now, I don't think he'd have gotten down to first base anyway, and it, for sure he saved a run. Nettles at third base. So, Dent's been on all three times he's been to the plate. Rivers way inside. I was surprised to hear Lopes say that also because there are many national leaguers that I've heard say that Chavez Ravine in Dodger Stadium is faster than some of the artificial surfaces over there. So this infield's got to be very fast. It's also very bumpy in the infield. Had to be resodded after the championship series. It was tore up pretty badly. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Lopes, he backs up, but he gets a good hop. He retires Rivers, so the Yankees go down this inning without a run. Five are gone in Yankee Stadium. We'll go to the six with the Yankees leading seven to two over the Dodgers. Do up. The Dodgers today. Watch your special tonight. Now let's go back upstairs. All right. Thank you, Kurt and Bob. Ron Say, Dusty Baker, Rick Monday. One ball, one strike on Say. Aside from that Bob Hope special tonight, it's a big day on NBC, this World Series game. Wonderful World of Disney. Then the Bob Hope special, Lifeline, a great new show on Doctors. I'll tell you about those times after this. On the East Coast, right after this game, you'll see those shows. West Coast, 7 o'clock. Two balls, one strikes. No outs. The Dodgers trying to scrap from behind as they trail by five in the sixth. Beatty just misses outside to say three and one. Problems that Beatty's got right now with a five-run lead, Tommy. Well, I don't think he has too much problem, Tony. He's got, you know I say that, the guy behind on plate. You know, the little guy's all banged up and he's got... Hurt shoulder, hurt knee, and hurt foot, and everything. Thurman Munson. Might have gone after a bad pitch. Goes to three and two. Beatty said before the game, he said, I'll just let Thurman take care of me. You know? And he does. He, he does. keeps him in the groove. That whole Yankee pitching staff really believes in this guy. And I don't blame him. I watched him last year's World Series, this year's World Series. He is a great director behind home plate. He doesn't get enough credit. They talk about his bat, and they say he's got a bad arm. But one of the things he, he does the best of 
any catcher really that I've ever seen is directing and controlling his pitcher. Three and two to say way inside, so Cezanne to lead off the six for the Dodgers. They've got to have base runners. They've had seven hits, three costly errors, alongside some mental blunders. Yeager, Tommy Lasorda, Monty Basgill behind him. They want to go home to Los Angeles. One thing that the Dodgers can't do here, Tony, that's for sure. Now, they came in here to Yankee Stadium. They were two, two games up. Then they lost one. Then they lost another, and it's even. And then they play very badly for about four or five innings. What they can't do is, of play. is get their head down, get their diver down, get their legs between their tails, and just wish they could go home to Dodger Stadium. They still have four innings to get back in this ball game, and they're a club that can score a lot of runs. Well, they won't get down because Tommy Lasorda won't let them. You better believe that. One strike on Baker was said first, not being held by Spencer. Yankees seven, Dodgers two. They wanted, before this game started, a good, strong five or six innings from Beatty. But he is not showing any signs of tiring. Hit the left field, a little bit off the end of the bat. Roy White to the warning track. He's got it for the first out. Another one of those balls in some ballparks, you might say. It's out or up against, but not here. And the Dodgers, when we told them how this park used to be, it's now 312 down the left field line, 387 you see. That used to be, well, just to the right of that, used to be 457 feet, right where that bullpen is. In center field, dead center field, it used to be 461. I've seen Mantle hit him out of there. And in right center, 447. So if it's a pitcher park now, it was an absolute canyon back then. Rick Monday, one ball. One thing that good teams do, Tony, is and certainly the great teams has overcome adversity. I think the Yankees have shown that. They came back during the regular seasons, as we've we talked about. They were down in the World Series, two games to none. They've come back from that. I think the Dodgers have to show, and more than anybody else, they have to show themselves that they can do it. And they're going to be under pressure. They're under pressure right now in the last four innings of this ballgame. If they lose, they're going to go home to Dodger Stadium, and they're going to need two games to win the World Series. They're going to have to prove to themselves, and this, these four innings can be very important psychologically for them, even if win or lose, going home to Dodger Stadium. Two balls, one strike on Monday. Or the Dodgers sure have shown, uh, the Yankees sure have shown something coming from 14 back, the playoff game, the game that Kurt Gowdy witnessed up in Boston. Another sudden victory affair up there. Two and two, one out. Rick Monday facing Jim Beatty. Spencer playing behind. The base runner is Ron Say. And like Bob Hope, Jimmy Lefevre, the first base coach, is a little bit cool. 7 to 2, the Yankees lead over the Dodgers. Beatty seems to be taking a little bit more time this inning. Good play by Spencer, who has an excellent glove. He backhands the ball, could have been in the corner for a double. Say gets as far as second base. Nice play by Jimmy Spencer. Monday turn on the ball. Spencer did make a fine defensive play. Takes the easy out at first base. There's a guy that is probably a better defensive first baseman than Chris Chambliss. With Chambliss there, he's also very steady. Spencer spent most of this season as a designated hitter. Started just four games at first base during the regular season. Lee Lacey, the designated hitter. One ball. Lacey has struck out both times, once called. I thought you made a good point a little while ago about the Dodgers' ability to come back in this ballpark with a spacious left and left center field and their right-handed power. It is tough. That's why they need so desperately Reggie Smith's bat on the left side in this park. Yankees, on the other hand, as the count goes 2-0 on Lacey with two outs. George Steinbrenner tailored this ball club and his bench for Yankee Stadium. He's stacked with left-handed hitters. 2-0. No. one You wouldn't think that 34 feet would make the difference, but in right center field, it's 353, and left center, 387. I'm not going down the canyon. That's ridiculous out there. But the power alleys, it's a difference of about 34 feet. Good 
pitch by Beatty right on the black. Two balls, two strikes. He is facing good pitches to Lacey. Lacey has pretty good bat control. He's the man who had five pinch hit home runs during the regular season. Looked to be made for the DH. He's one short of the record. Fly ball. He got it in his kitchen. An alleyway. Turner's off. So Beatty pitches out of it again. So we'll go to the last of the sixth here in Yankee Stadium. The Yankees lead 7 to 2 over the Dodgers. There's your line score. New up, Roy White, Thurman Munson, and Reggie Jackson. Oh, what you've been doing. Roy White, Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson, the base hop, the third Dodger pitcher, 7-2, the Yankees lead over the Dodgers. Yankees with 11 base hits, the Dodgers 7. Yankees have left seven men on base, through five, one ball. Boy, Yeager is really, really battling. That knuckleball. Steve Yeager, that protection hanging down, he and trainer Bill Bueller designed it to protect the throw. Look at that ball move. It is amazing what that thing does. Don't ask me to explain the aerodynamics of it. I've had letters from scientists why a knuckleball moves. There you see the protection again. Also the helmet that he wears in case the hitter swings with that backlash. And of course the number 19 as the Dodgers have dedicated this series to Jim Gilliam. Russell charges the ball over to Garvey, one out. Up comes Thurman Munson, and some of the people are standing. The very sophisticated fans here in Yankee Stadium some of the most sophisticated in the world. They appreciate what Munson has gone through this year. Playing through the injuries, he has said many times that he is embarrassing himself with the bat. But, Tom, I think you said it best. Hit deep to left field by Munson. A high knuckleball. Baker in the Death Valley. He makes a nice running catch for the second down. That ball's got to travel, what, 400 feet? It's got to be a home run in Dodger Stadium. There's no question about that. Home run anywhere except here. Except Yankee Stadium. I think the point you make, we made about Thurman, things that don't show up in the box score, and you don't see it where it says hits and RBIs and home runs and all that stuff, is his work handling his pitchers. He's just one of those invaluable assets that might be the most valuable player on this team. Munson because the team. of just the way he handles his pitching. Full foul by Reggie. Munson, the team captain, first since Lou Gehrig. Tom, I just want to add, I bet if he doesn't hit close to 300, though, he wouldn't be playing every day. Pardon? If he doesn't hit 300, he wouldn't be playing every day handling pitches. Managers, for some reason, look for that guy that can sock, and that's where that added thing comes in there. Jackson has been intentionally walked to load the bases in the first. He struck out in the third, and he walked in the fourth. One ball, one strike, two outs. The Yankees lead 7-2. to two. We're in the last of the sixth. It was Huff, off whom Jackson hit the monstrous home run, as you mentioned in one of the early games, Tom. Huh? He pulled it. It could be in the stands, though. It's out of play. Hit a tremendous home run off Huff. Last think, game of the World Series last year. I think your pitcher and catcher working together is one of the real underrated, overlooked facets of baseball. There's no 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 question about that. That's a that's the, the primary aspect of the game. Those two guys right there, the guy on the mound, Charlie Huff, the pitcher, the catcher. They've got to communicate and understand each other. And that guy right there, the catcher, has to get into 10 guys on the entire team. He's got to understand 10 different personalities. One ball, two strikes. Jackson drills it through the overshift off the glove of Steve Garvey. Get the shift on to the right side, and he still got it through. You know, you can add a little bit to that. Here's Garvey as he'll go for the backhanded play. It's hit so hard, it just almost knocks the glove off Garvey. Watch that, right off the webbing. I think you can add the middle infielders to that. The pitcher and catchers working together, but the middle infielders, because pitchers change their patterns. I wanted to get on this somehow. Fellas. I bet if I go talk to Kiner next door, he says the outfielders are going to the count. Wrong. <laughs> We're getting back to the basic strengths of a baseball team. That pitcher and that catcher, and then you go to the infielders, the second baseman, the shortstop, and the center fielder. A good baseball teams, almost all of them, have that strength right up the middle. And yet, surprisingly, the Dodgers are not known for a strong defensive team at second and short. Two outs. Jackson at first. 
Tonella hits one deep to left center field. A long run for Baker. Once again, deep, but not deep enough in this ballpark. So, six are gone here in Yankee Stadium. The score stays at Yankee 7, Dodgers 2. The Dodgers trying to scrap back. Do up Yeager, the scheduled hitter, maybe a pitch hitter. Davey Lumps, then Bill Russell. And we'll be back after these messages from your... Yankee Stadium. Background of Manhattan. Lights blinking. The house that Ruth built. Game five. And it's the Yankees 7 2 over the Dodgers. Top of the seventh. Johnny Oates will be the pinch hitter. It's a travel day tomorrow, then game six in this Dodger Stadium. These clubs have been perfect if it ends like this in their home parks. Dodgers won two in Dodger Stadium, and the Yankees have won two well on their way to winning the third one here, but it's not over. Johnny Oates. It's his first appearance in the series against Jim Beatty. It's a strike. He's trying to get something started. Oates was 0 for 1 in the 1977 series. Watching him blow that bubble gum. He was a finalist in my bubble, bubble gum blowing contest. Was Bavakwa the winner? Bavakwa was the winner. Little things you learn by listening. <laughs> one ball, one strike. 1978, Johnny Oates hit 307. He only went to bat. Debbie Lopes there with that resistor. Only batted 75 times. Almost got him, Johnny Oates. A catcher. Oates will bunt once in a while. He drag bunt, and he faked the drag bunt on that first one. I guess he didn't make a believer out of Jim Spencer. Spencer's still way back there, just a few feet in front of the outfield grass. Outside, three and one. Jim Beatty has been in control as we look at the defense. There is Spencer way back there. In his 22 starts for the Yankees this year, he did not pitch a complete game. His longest was eight and two thirds. Oates draws a base on balls. And that is only the third walk given up by Beatty. He has struck out five. He's allowed to dodge seven hits. Here is Davy Lopes. The bullpen for the Yankees starts to stir a bit. And they got the big goose down there. Gossage. It wasn't it in Pittsburgh where some fans sent him a live goose that he used to take on some plane trips? <laughs> I still think Bernie Carbo taking that stuffed monkey with him was the best. Lopes. Ah. They're going to make him throw oh. strikes there, that's for sure. Here comes Nettles. He wants a contest. Yep. Stall for a little bit of time as another man gets up down to the bullpen for the Yankees. Simple explanation. Kid, you got a five-run lead. Make him hit the ball. Don't get him on there for the big guys who can pop one out. Lasorda hoping his club can get something going here. Outside, two balls and no strikes. I tell you, on the bench, as we look at the Yankees, when you're behind like this, things like a couple base on balls, a bloop, and a long one, and we're back in it. Look at Lopes walking way out of there, hoping to distract the youngster. He was going to take it all away. Beatty did not break his concentration, got a strike. Yankees haven't had many laughers the second half of the season. Three balls and one strike, and the way Beatty's going out, he seems to be aiming the ball, Tom. A little bit. It could, the cold could be getting to him, Joe. It's 52 degrees now here at Yankee Stadium, and you wonder many times how a pitcher can keep warm out there. He'll wear a couple, wear a couple of layers of clothing. That runs a count to three and two. Beatty's got a T-shirt on and then the sweatshirt on underneath that, and then his jersey. Once in a while on the bench, you get a little ointment and a little Alvaline cream to kind of keep the wind or the cold off. Him. And Beatty now is a bit upset. That is the Bob Lemon is coming out. Those well, walk given up. Those are those high strikes that some people say, and I think you do, Tom, that the National League does not give you. They give you the low pitch. And Beatty and Munson, Beatty especially glared in at Frank Pulley, the home plate umpire. Here's that last pitch, Tom. 
you see Beatty on the three and two pitch, the Lopes. There is some argument whether the strike zone is different between the National League and the American League. That fits there up around the letters. Definitely a ball in my league. Ball belt high. No, that's above yeah, the belt. That's way up here. Uh, way no. up here. Munson caught that ball below his mask. Tony, no. I disagree. That was a ball. That was. That was oh. way out of the strike zone. Okay. If we're going to umpire from a television screen. <laughs> I tell you, but Beatty worrying about Cole. He's from South Portland, Maine, and I think their summer season is a Tuesday up there. So he shouldn't be worried with the cold, but here he comes. There's another one. You made the point the other day, Tony, about umpires are different. Some umpires, yes, some are high, some are not high above umpires. There's umpires in the National League won't give you a strike above the belt. That's the highest you get. Right there. That just at the bottom, just an inch above the belt will be the high part of the strike zone. I know. It'll vary from umpire to umpire. You're right. Consistency is the important thing, and Pulley is very good and very consistent. That's out of play. Russell, he is two for three, is driven in a run. Seven runs, 12 hits, and no errors for the Yankees. Two runs, seven hits, three errors for the Dodgers. We're in the seventh inning. Nobody out. Base runners at first and second. One two pitch. Foul back. Johnny Oates is on at second and Lopes is on at first. And the on deck hitter is Smith. Reggie, Reggie Smith, that is, broke loose with a home run yesterday. He drove in the first run for the Dodgers. Couple men on. That was a big strikeout for him, too, Joe. First two men got on. Russell, a guy that does not strike out very much. And Beatty doesn't strike out that many. He averaged 4.6 per nine innings for the Yankees. But he did strike out eight and eight innings against Cleveland. And he got eight and eight and two-thirds against the Red Sox. So he has had a high of eight. He's got six. He has walked five. He has allowed seven hits, but only two runs. And he leads seven to two. There you see the base runners. Oates at second. Lopes is at first. One man out. If the Dodgers are going to get back in this game now, they're going to have to do it with pop from their big man, Reggie Smith or Steve Garvey. One of their big guys is going to have to do something here. Garvey has been very silent during this World Series. If Smith can't do it. He's got to walk up there and try and pop one for him. They got five runs to overcome here, and they just have eight outs left. Reggie, one for three today. Struck out in the third, fly to right in the fifth after that RBI single in the first. One ball and one strike on Reggie Smith. There's our left-handed hitter that becomes vulnerable as we see the line score to pitching outside because you better believe Reggie Smith's trying to pull the ball. He's going to be trying to turn those hips in a hurry. He gets under it. Second baseman Ed Vargo popped it up there in a hurry. He had that right hand straight in the air. So there are two away, and here is Steve Garvey. Garvey bounced out short to first in the first inning. He singled in the third off Greg Nettles, his glove, and then struck out in the fifth. Tuesday night, game six from Dodger Stadium. It'll be Hunter or Guidry for the Yankees and Don Sutton for the Dodgers. at second base. He pinch it for Jaeger and walk. Davey Lopes walk. He's on it first. Change the speed well on that breaking ball. The first was a hard breaking ball. That will he pull the string out. Garvey chased the bad ball the last time to strike out. Let's see what Beatty does. the score Yankees seven the Dodgers two and look at that bench seven to two Yankees lead the Dodgers in the middle of the seventh 
Last of the Yankee seven. Okay, Kurt. Well, that's very unfortunate for the losing all that. I was coming up to the booth before the game, and they had a handcuffed man that seven planes closed policemen, and they caught the guy coming into the seats. Don't know if it was the guy that stole everything, but he was going to get the seats. Davy Lopes made the catch a line drive, and Nettles is out. A reminder here that October 38 wins, knockouts. Spencer takes a strike. Most recent one, he knocked out uh, Juan Malvarez in the second round in an Ali Spinks rematch. You may have seen that one on September 15th. Fel Clemente is a native of the Philippines. He's won four of the six matches during the 78s, ranked ninth. So it'll be a good battle. Bud Collins and Sugar Ray Leonard will be there at ringside. That's October 21st to Saturday. And NBC Sports World Special. A Dodger bench. Stay tuned now. The wonderful world of Disney will be seen over most of these stations immediately following this World Series telecast. Program will be seen in its regular time period on most mountain and Pacific time zone stations. Banners, fans, cheering, everything. We'll have the same thing, I'm sure, when we get back to Dodger Stadium. Tuesday, knuckleball, three and ones account. If this game ends like this, here's a piece of, well, call it trivia, call it information. Never in a uh, World Series history has a team won four in a row after losing the first two. 3-1 pitch to Spencer. There is a base hit looping in the center field. Now, teams have lost two in a row, and they've won the series when they played seven games. But never has a team lost two in a row and won the next four. Only five teams in baseball history lost the first two and came back and won the World Series. Last was Pittsburgh against Baltimore, 1971, El Rock. There you see him, Catfish Hunter, Fred Stanley, Gary Thomas, and Paul Blair. Stanley loves it. He says, boy, they're looking at me in Tempe, my hometown. Brian Doyle, base hit and scored in that fourth inning. Takes it high, ball one. Say has moved in close. We're in the bottom of the seventh, one man out. One man is on. Seven to two, the Yankees lead the Dodgers. Charlie Huff, a knuckleballer, in relief. Good shot of the umpire's position. Base hit, Doyle hits another one. Spencer will stop at second. These Yankees, I'll tell you, they are really on a rampage. These little guys at the bottom of the lineup for the Yankees have really been hot. It's a second hit for Doyle. Dent's got two hits already. So Bucky Dent is a hitter, and we'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Joe Garagiola here with Tony Kubek, Tom Seaver, and Kurt Gowdy. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Yankees are leading seven to two. They've got 14 hits, no errors. Dodgers two seven three. The line score. Base runners at first and second, one out. Bucky Dent, the batter. Knuckleball outside, ball one. Dent walked and scored in the third. Single and scored in the fourth. Single in the fifth. 14 base hits. Seven runs. Gets by Johnny Oates. And the runners advance. Right through his legs. He knows knuckleball that just went straight down. He's, the bottom fell right out. I'd like to see that one again. Ooh. Here Ooh. it is. Watch it now. He stays with it. Now he's got his look at that. <laughs> it just at the very last minute it dropped and he was in front of the ball. He did everything. I tell you, when they throw knuckleballs like that, you either better have good track shoes or hope that you would. Well, maybe lit about three candles this morning. There's one that surprised me. It scored a wild pitch. It went through his legs. The other one, they scored a pass ball unless they changed it on Jaeger, and it was about four feet outside. Now the infield has to move in. Dent pulls it foul. That knuckle.
knuckle ball really becomes a luxury with base runners at third. I'll tell you, there's no way a curveball. Now, if a right-hander throws you a curveball, you know it's going to break to your right. You start to shift. If it's a screwball, you go the other way. A knuckle ball, you want to holler, "Hey, mama!" It's amazing that Hoyt Willow, who pitched more baseball games than any other pitcher, had such a remarkable relief ref record over all the years. Situation just like this. He could control what it was going to do though at times. Dent had a good cut at it. I just wonder how many catches he sent home though talking to themselves. Oh boy. <laughs> Gus Triandos for one. He's, he met more people back at the backstop than anybody else. All you can do is what Johnny Oates is doing. Pull the mask down. Bite your lip and go get it. is going to be out of play. The Yankees have seven runs, 14 hits, and no errors. The Dodgers have two runs, seven hits, and three errors. And we've been talking about power throughout this series. All 14 hits by the Yankees have been singles. So it's been a spray pop gun kind of attack, but when you get 14 of them and you get them in the right spot, you can put crooked numbers on the scoreboard, and they got seven of them up there. Those errors have made a couple of those doubles and triples, however, by the Dodgers. One-two pitch. That got Johnny Oates fouled off the foot. That's about all you need on a cold day is to catch a knuckleball and then get hit with the foul tip on the foot. Most one base hits in the game, one club, 15. New York National League versus New York American League, October 7th, 1921. American League, New York, New York National League, October 6th, 1936. So we're in on something. One more single and we'll tie a record. Johnny Oates diving, falling. Boy, he's having fun back there, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> he says, do I need this? That's torture. <laughs> I tell you, this is like, <laughs> he's run back to the screen. He's taking one off the foot of the knee. He's fallen on his face. He slipped on the turf, chasing one ball. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Struck him out. He held on to it. I tell you, this is about as much fun for a catcher as a root canal. So I always forget the names. It was Rick Farrell, who's not executive for Detroit. He caught four knuckleball pitchers. Do you remember who they were? Yeah, Roger Wolf, Dutch Leonard, Mickey Hefner, and Johnny Nigley. Oh. Four easy names to remember, isn't it? Hey, if he's a knuckleball pitcher, I got him on my list. Here is Mickey Rivers. Seven to two. Yankees are leading two outs. Base runners in second and third. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Rivers has had a big day. He is three for four, driven in a run, and he has scored two. Pulls it foul. Tuesday night will be in Dodger Stadium. Spencer heading back to third. Doyle heading back to second. The pitchers, Catfish Hunter or Ron Guidry, it'll be announced after this game. The Yankees and Don Sutton for the Dodgers. going to grip it and when we stayed with it you could see him as he delivered the ball and it was going to be a knuckleball. Joe this game right now is not out of reach for the Dodgers and they've had a couple of threats with Smith up and Garvey. Right now if Rivers gets a hit gives the Yankees a seven run lead it might be all over that bullpen. This is a tough out for Huff. If he gets it he may still keep his team in the game. Oates oh, can't find it he boxed it up hit him in the chest. Watch Johnny Oates on this. He's bearing down all the way, staying with it, and oh. all you can do is smother it. I've had days like that when I wanted to get a hammer and just hit that ball. And you know when you go back to the bench, too, everybody gives you all the static in the world about it. Uh, you having fun? You enjoy that one? 
box up another dozen. One two pitch now. Missed it all the way back to the screen. Rivers will be safe. The run will score. And that is typical of what's happening to the Dodgers today. Even on a strikeout, the Yankees score a run. That ball goes while you watch it. Moves a foot or two outside. There it goes. Starts starting. Rivers misses it by about six inches. But a run scores. I believe there's going to be a pitch running change. Here it is again, Tom. He goes out after what he tried to get wow. in front of. He just couldn't get there in time. Bowen all the way back to the screen and cost the Dodgers another run. Wicked. The pinch runner is Paul Blair. Blair has come in to run. Wild pitch and a run scores. So here is Roy White. White was safe on air, drove in a run and scored, base hit, and was out twice. Knuckleball. Strike one. Not many times you'll see a catcher catch a ball on his knees, it'll be called a strike. Doyle at third, Paul Blair's at first, two outs. One ball, one strike, eight to two. Johnny Oates, who hasn't caught very much as we look at Paul Blair, behind the plate, he hasn't caught very much this season. You know, Tony, you wonder. Everybody in the park knows it's going to be a knuckleball. Why the world of catcher even gives a signal in this situation? Off the end of the bat. I tell you, it is just force of habit. I've been sure so frustrated is. back there. I've hollered to them. They know what you're going to throw, and they you know I can't catch it. Throw it. Okay. One ball, two strikes. Charlie Hump has got a good knuckleball. There might be a couple couple situations where you wouldn't throw a three and zero oh or a three and two with the bases loaded, and you might even throw it there. There's the base hit. Another run scores nine to two. Blair stops. Roy White gets the hit. It's the 15th single of the ball game. And that ties the record. The Dodger dugout. The Yankee dugout. It's a tough day for Tom Lasorda and his charges as these Yankees with 15 singles. Brian Doyle scores the run. They certainly have been the Bronx, Bronx Bombers today, 15 singles. But the little guys at the bottom of the lineup have done one heck of a job. Doyle and Dent, those are the guys you don't expect hits from, and any time they get them, it's almost like a luxury. They've been on base five times between them. Two runs in, Munson has a double. He's having quite a day, Joe. And they appreciate him here. Here's Dusty. He was playing deep, but he still had a long way to go. Look at him. Just out of his reach, about a foot. Two runs come home. Munson has his double. Thurman hit that ball right on the screws. That's a long way out there. Kind of coasted into second. Just as he got to second, he had thoughts about going to third. He said, no, nah, this is enough. Jackson, Lopes has it. And that'll end the inning. But the Yankees, another big inning. Four runs here in the bottom of the seventh. We look at Dusty Baker running down the ball, hit by Munson. He just cannot get it. And so, as we complete seven innings of baseball here, Yankees 11, Dodgers 2. Defensive changes. Paul Blair stays in the game. He'll be in center field. And Gary Thomason has replaced Roy White in left field. Yeah, 11 runs, 16 hits, and no errors for the Yankees. Two runs, seven hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. Munson, five RBIs, three hits. He has scored a run. Tom, if you were on a ball club that was on the short end of the score like the Yankees and the way the, Dodgers, uh, the Yankees have treated the Dodgers, what would it do to your ball club? Well, I think the whole story for the Dodgers was shown when Davey Lopes made that last out. He 
picked up Jackson's ball, just kind of flipped it over to Steve Garvey and then waved his hand in disgust. I mean, obviously, they've got to be upset. They're depressed. There's Davey Lopes. You can see him. He doesn't look too very happy. He's cold. He's losing 11 to 2. He wants to get out of here. He wants to go to Dodger Stadium. I saw it happen one time. Club lost a game 16 to nothing, 12 to nothing in a World Series. And they beat us in 1960, the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's what could happen. Didn't phase them a bet. Oh. Bad hop. Base hit. Ron Say gets a bad hop single off the glove of Nettles. I think the amazing part about that right there was that it took such a wicked hop, and somehow Nettles still got part of his glove on it. The ball hits that edge of the grass where you get the bad hops, bad hops because of the dirt buildup. And there it goes. He had to raise that glove very quickly. We'll see it from our left field camera, Tom. I think Watch it right on the edge of the grass. That's where the dirt builds up. He's trying to prove to us that he's a mere mortal on that well. Why does he pick to do that when the score's 11 to 2? Uh, I think he had that plan. <laughs> One strike to count on Dusty Baker, who is 0 for 3. Beanie. Misses. Say they wanted a tough five or six innings from him, and he's got a nine run lead, and we're in the top of the eighth inning. Nobody out, one man on. Ron Say. Tapped foul. Tuesday night, Dodger Stadium, and they've announced Hunter R. Guidry. I've got to believe it'll be Catfish now for the Dodgers. It's Sutton. I want to remind you, a big night at NBC tonight after this ball game, the wonderful World of Disney, Bob Hope's 75th anniversary special, Lifeline, a show that I saw the first episode of. Interesting show live with a lot of doctors on the East Coast right after this game. West Coast, 7 o'clock. Fastball is high. Two balls and two strikes. Ron Say at first. out of play. Tony Meade mentioned last inning about the umpire Frank Foley behind home plate. We get a good shot on the center field camera how he positions himself behind Thurman Munson on the inside here. He gets himself between Munson and the batter. Gets a good view of home plate. You're talking about high ball umpire, low ball umpire, but you said the one word that every pitcher wants most from any umpire. That word's consistency. He's not going to call the high pitch if he's not going to call the low pitch. Just do it all the time. Don't call it one time a strike, and then the next time when you need a pitch, a three and two count, and call it a ball. That's the biggest thing that an umpire can give to a pitcher. It's fouled out of play. When you know a certain umpire is behind the plate, do you keep that in mind and kind of work a little bit towards him? You know what certain umpires call, Joey, if they call the high pitch or if they call the low pitch or if they have a wide strike zone or whatever. Every, every umpire is like every athlete. How about pulling? A little bit differently. How about pulling? It's a good basic umpire. Low ball umpire will not give you the high strike and very good on the corners. I like the throw to Eight strikeouts for Beatty. Baker out on strikes. He's one of the best umpires because he's consistent. And that's... That's the one thing that I want more from any umpire is consistency. As long as they're consistent behind that play, that's the same thing as a mark as a great ball player, is consistency. Rick Monday. Monday walked to me, second popped out and bounced out. Gets under one, flips the bat because he knew he had a good pitch, but Pinella should make it. Jay Johnstone, he's the man new in right field. He snuck in on us. He sure did. They changed Thomason and left. But Blair, what does Bob Hope have tonight? What does he have? Didn't he have a show on tonight? Tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hope was doing part of his act. He's got the special on tonight. One old pitch. Bouncing ball. Bucky Dan flips it down. I'll tell you, the best way to sum up the feeling as Thomason comes up, you look at the Dodgers, is that the, and you've heard the expression many times, the Yankees are laughing and telling jokes, and the Dodgers are saying, deal the cards. It's going to be a tough ride home for the Dodgers, and they're going to have to do something to pick themselves up. I don't know what 
Tony or Tom, do you have a suggestion? I think all you got to do is look back just a few days to tell you what could happen. We're not saying it will. When the Dodgers came to Yankee Stadium, the Yankees were obviously in real big trouble, down two ball games. The Dodgers know this. The momentum is reversed, but that momentum can be overworked in any sport. It can shift in a hurry, and going home might be the thing for the Dodgers. That's biggest the kind thing, they need. That's exactly right. Tony, the biggest thing that they can do is go in there after the game, shower and shave, and get warm, go to the airport, and get on their airplane, and go to Los Angeles. Get out of here. This, get, this is bad memory spot for them, Yankee Stadium. They've got to get out of here. But how about the Yankees? They're about nine feet off the ground. They were two down coming in here, and they swept them, and uh, and they're putting a crusher to them. And they got an off day in between here too, and that's going to help the that's going to help the Dodgers. The off day between this game and the game out in Los Angeles on Tuesday is going to help the Dodgers. Thomason is out on strikes. He was batting in Pinellas' spot. I think the big thing is that both of these clubs played 162 games regular season. They know how good they are. The Yankees had to go to the playoff. Then they went to the championship series. Both clubs played four games. So one little short series of three games is not going to hurt either club. Here is Nettles. You know, the same questions that they asked the Yankees will be asked the Dodgers after that first game. You know, 11 to 5 thing. All Can, those you come back? Can you come back? You remember all that garbage? Yeah, I asked that question. <laughs> I was one of the guys that asked it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> I mean, uh, those brilliant questions that were asked. One ball, one strike. I got to tell you about a question I heard asked that I thought was ridiculous. Knuckleball gets away. Young Welch, after the game, the way he's been pitching, and Penella got the hit. One of the riders asked him, how does it feel to go from hero to goat so fast? Can you imagine that? I imagine that I've gotten that a few times in my career. Right this it down. makes you want to <laughs> jump up and pop a rider right in the nose. Or a TV guy like the guy That's sitting right. on my right here. That's right. <laughs> Three balls, one strike. One out, nobody on. Pull foul. Before the game, I went by George Steinbrenner's office, talked to him, chatted with him for a minute, and he's very proud, obviously, of his Yankees. The thing he talked about most is that how his club has come back all season long, and they've come back in this World Series. And he says, you know, I've done it without the, we've done it without the running game. I did it without Willie Randolph in this World Series and Mickey Rivers hurt. Greg Nettle strikes out on another knuckleball. Between him, Randolph and Rivers stole 61 bases during the regular season. And he's done it without two of the pitchers that he counted on. Don Gullett and Andy Messersmith. They're not here. They're on disabled list. Fan has a Greg Nettle's glove, a model of Greg Nettle's glove down there. Look at the size of that thing. That's how it looks to Davey Lopes. He's been hitting some shots down there. Spencer takes it low, ball one. 11 runs, 16 hits and no errors for the Yankees. Two runs, eight hits and three errors for the Dodgers. Two outs and nobody on. Yankee fans are having a field day. But as Dick Mata said, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. One ball, one strike. Game six will be a big one. You're gonna be with us. It'll be Hunter and Guidry for the Yankees, Don Sutton for the Dodgers. That's Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. that would be a little bit of revenge in their hearts, the Dodgers, for this beating. You can bet on that, just like the Yankees came back with a vengeance after losing 11 to 5. Final score, Miami over San Diego, 28-21. 34-17, Rams over Minnesota. Knuckleball. Ball three. 28 and Kansas City 6. 14 to 7 New Orleans over the 49ers. Yeah, the 49ers 14 to 7. Their yeah. problems, aren't they? Spencer draws the base on balls. Tom, you're talking about the Yankee running game. Near the end of the season, it was one of the most important things they had going for them in the pennant stretch to catch the Red Sox. And I've forgotten the precise figures, but they installed something like 35 out of 40. He had himself a fine day. He's two for four, two base hits. He has scored two runs. He has singled the right. 
twice in the fourth and in the seventh. Springstead gave the call. He threw his hands up and then he flipped into the direction of foul territory. That little corner right there, there's Marty Springstead. That corner down there is kind of a nice little place. It used to be 296 before they refurbished this. It's now 310, as you see. And could Yogi wrap around that pole, Joe? Oh, could he? He was ever? amazing. He could take a pitch a foot outside and reach out with those strong hands, whip it around the pole. He loved to hit down that line. Knuckleball, two strikes. There's my man. For the first time this series, he's not on the phone. He had nettles in the players' room before the game, or not nettles, or Cliff Johnson had him pinned. They call him strong hands. Oh, he does have oh. strong hands. That like bocce a... ball will do it for you. <laughs> right field, it is a base hit. Doyle has another one. He's three base hits this afternoon. Another single. Three for five. He said he's a contact hitter. He has been making contact. He keeps that up. They're going to make him the hitting instructor. His brother Blake and older brother Denny. At that baseball school they got in Winter Haven. That says it all. The Dodger bench. Gloomy, sad set of kids on there. I'll tell you that. Set of players and. Some of the kids of the Dodgers players on the bench with them. Knuckleball way outside. Oates boxes it. 17 hits. 11 runs, 17 hits and no errors. Two runs, eight hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. We're in the bottom of the eighth. There are two outs. Base runners at first and second. Spencer's at second, and Doyle is at first. some of the plays we've seen it's almost like the wonderful world of Disney was on no, I'm going to ask you something. I don't know what it is let's see this pitch see if we have time for your answer why and I don't know maybe you know something I don't Doug Rao the left hander won 15 ball games for this ball club Yankee Stadium with the Yankee hitters in the lineup four left handers but why has he not pitched at least seen some of these Yankee hitters he could be very effective against them. It's a surprise to me. Out of play. There he is in the bullpen. Doug Rao loosening up. He's well, he had, you know, he, he had a good year. Sure. Well, he was 15 and 9, as you said. A 3.2 ERA. Why we haven't seen him, I don't know. I really, it, there's nothing wrong with him. I checked with the trainer before the start of the World Series, and the Dodgers are all healthy. They really have no health problems other than Reggie Smith slightly, maybe a little bit of bronchitis or whatever. 2-2 two, two pitch, foul back, count remains the same. But you would have thought, I think you're exactly right, that especially in this ballpark with the left field fence and the left field hitters, that you would have seen Doug Rao. I thought you would have seen him earlier today when Bert Hooten left the game. Yeah, and of course, he pitched a game against the Philadelphia Phillies in the championship series. Did fairly well after he struggled right at the start. So he just just taken out of the rotation. I guess they wanted to well, they're going with what they got. Scores. Doyle heads for third, then heads for second. He's safe. Double. Well, we talked about him already several times today. The, the little guys at the bottom of the lineup have really been amazing. Doyle and Dent have been on base seven times in this ball game. They have scored four, five runs between them. Now watch this, Tony. Watch this play at second and a tag by Davey Lopes. Now he just doesn't around, turn around patty cake him. He pops in pretty good. He's not very happy out there. If you can't beat him one way, I'll give him a good slap anyway. Paul Blair, strike one. Seems like Lasorda has asked Charlie Huff to just stand out there, Charlie. Do the best you can. Save some pictures for me. Two strikes. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Twelve runs, 18 hits, no errors for the Yankees. Two, eight, and three for the Dodgers. 
Blair is out on strikes. Oates will have to throw to Garvey. He does. And that ends the inning. Huff ended up striking out the side, but not before the Yankees scored another one. So at the end of eight, Yankees 12, Dodgers 2. 12 to 2, Yankees lead the Dodgers. We're in the ninth inning. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. And today's World Series telecast was produced by Michael Weissman, directed by Harry Coyle. And the pregame show was produced by David Stern, directed by Ken Fouts. Technical director, Horace Ruiz. Associate producer, Kenneth Edmondson. And our associate directors, Richard Klein and Bob Levy. Beattie, who was asked to give him five or six strong innings, is going into the ninth. There's a strike. Johnny Oates. Beattie, who did not have a complete game in 1978, well on his way to having his first one here in game five of the World Series. Game six, Tuesday night. You'll see it here, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Johnny Oates sends one back up the middle. He's on with a single. would like to throw a little bitty scare as we watch this line drive almost takes the foot off of Beatty, but a little rally right here might be a little more comfortable for them as they go home to Dodger Stadium for that plane ride. Shake the Yankees up just a little bit, showing that they haven't died, and got a good start at it with Oates on first. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. There's Catfish Hunter. Yankee State.